Today, I'm going to talk about AI product management. Uh, during my presentation, uh, if you have some questions or comments, please feel free to interrupt my presentation or post a comment on the chat box. Okay. Uh, let me introduce myself at first. Yeah, uh, again, I'm working in Lina for about one year. So currently, I'm in charge of product management of all, all of Lina products and managing product team as manager. So the company is still uh, small, about 100 employees. So my team has uh, not only PM, but also designer, uh, quality assurance, and yeah, product related people. So yeah, I'm managing all of the product related people as product management lead. And before Rina, uh, I was in line and had the responsibilities about AI product planning. And I was developing our smart speaker with display. Uh, it is called our smart display and our virtual assistant for car navigation. So that is a car navigation service with voice capabilities. And also uh, I'm developing a conversational AI uh, for a call center as B2B business. So for recent uh, few years, I was engaged, I, I, I am engaged in conversational AI and uh, AI related product. And before I, uh, I was in Yahoo uh, and at the beginning of Yahoo, I was hired as software engineer and on the later half I was uh, in Yahoo, I was engaged in IoT platform business. So uh, I have a background of software engineer, but yeah, I now, uh, I don't any I don't write any code. And today's theme is yeah AI product management. But yeah, honestly, it's almost impossible to cover uh, all of AI related product management because yeah there are various types of AI, and they have different tips and difficulties for each type. So for example, uh, speech recognition or text mining or image recognition, uh, content creation, and all are based on AI technologies, but yeah, different characteristics. Uh, so today I'm going to focus on the case of our product. So it, it might not be general tips, but yeah, I think uh, yeah, it is actual use case. So I wish it will be horrible for you. And at first, yeah, I'm going to talk, uh, explain our company and product to share background for product management. Okay, yeah, let me start with the explanation of our most famous character, Rina. So we started our business with Rina and she debuted online uh, over six, seven years ago. And now she has 8.5 million friends. And currently she is not only online, but have YouTube channel, uh, radio programs, and Twitter accounts, and also working as artists, uh, creating drawings ex and expanding her scenes. And yeah, we started uh, our business with this character, but our business now is not only with Rina, so, but we are expanding our business, uh, both of B2B and B2C. So about B2C, uh, increasing characters and supporting platform. Uh, for example, uh, you can talk with Rina on Bing. Uh, Bing is a, a search engine from Microsoft and you can talk with uh, Rina on Bing search page. And also uh, not only B2C, uh, we are providing platform uh, to external companies uh, with which uh, companies can create their own AI characters. Uh, for example, a uh, game company created character and you can see this girl character and this character is created by our technologies. So like that, uh, we are expanding uh, the number of characters and uh, yes, and our mission is that to provide AI characters to all people and all companies. So 
So yeah, but、uh, some people said,、uh, why character, why AI characters? And what is the value in AI characters? So those questions are often asked by some people. So yeah, actually,、uh, technologically, it has many similarities between AI characters and、uh, general chatbot. So, but I think the fundamental value is completely different. Of course, AI characters can answer for questions. So, but not only for that, AI character can listen to people's talking. So, it's very helpful, for example,、uh, for the case of elderly care. So, AI character continue to talk with people without any complaints. So, sometimes it is very hard for humans to continue to talk. Uh, of uh, someone's、uh, talking. So, yeah, in addition to it, I think a character could be a catalyst of human relationship.、Uh, we've already provided、uh, a character solution、uh, that is aiming to connect people in workplace.、Uh, as you may know,、uh, remote working company、uh, is likely to have i s s u e、uh, that. Is, yeah, it's difficult to build a relationship across d e p a r t m e n t or across t e a m So, but AI、yeah, character could be a good coordinator. So, because、uh, they don't have any hesitation and they don't have any bias, so they can connect people very friendly. So, yeah, regarding these visions,、uh, some people still might think so it is really valuable for people. Uh, do people need those who don't automate something?、Uh, to、uh, answer for this question, let me tell、uh, another story. So, it is a very interesting story, and、uh, it is a Japanese job、uh, that is called Scabra. It is completely Japanese word. So, Scabra is a、uh, abbreviation of Shigoto Skande Bura Bura. So it is, in, it is Japanese, but in English, it is hanging around, not liking the work. And a scabra is an abbreviation of Shigoto Skande Bura Bura. And a scabra was a job as a communicator in coal quarry、uh, who doesn't dig any coal. So, but、uh, just talk with other employees. So it was an actual job a couple of decades ago in Japan. And a fan, The business was deteriorating.、Uh, the company fired them,、uh, Scabra. And uh, what, happened, uh, what happened is was,、uh, the productivity, productivity of the team was down. So it means、uh, Scabra is a key person to raise performance and、uh, keep people's motivation. So even those Uh, he himself doesn't dig and doesn't produce coal、uh, by himself. Yeah, it's very interesting. And I think Rina's value is very similar to this story. So it's not automate.、Uh, yeah, Rina, Rina's character is not,、uh, is not aiming to automate something, but it could affect people's mind、uh, to encourage them and could be a catalyst. So, like those values,、uh, AI characters have new and big values for our communication.、Uh, while I have much more stories, but yeah, explaining our product or vision is not m e a n t h e m e today. So, let's move on to AI product management. And、uh, to explain a sample case of AI product management, yeah, I'm going to use our product、uh, named Carol. So, we have launched this product、uh, as official version last month,、uh, about two, two weeks ago,、uh, before the Golden Week in Japan. And this is a B2C product, and for general users,、uh, mainly for creators,、uh, in this product, users can create their own, their own characters very easily. And also, it is a kind of automated social network.、Uh, characters will be framed autonomously. Uh, and communicate each other、uh, without any user's action. And、uh, your characters can create content、uh, by themselves.、Uh, yeah, it means it's something like an alternative social network by AI characters. 
Uh, in this product, we are using a lot of AI models, uh, conversation, uh, content generation, and our uh, image generation. Uh, for example, yeah, you, you can see uh, this sticker-like image. Uh, this image is created by uh, AI model. And of course, uh, there is no AI part. Uh, for example, uh, yeah, we, we have implemented gamification uh, features. Uh, for example, you can get points uh, by doing something like a daily login or a talk to uh, their characters. And uh, by using the point, uh, you can um, user can get some skills and put the skills to characters. Uh, they can grow their own AI characters. And uh, I'm reading uh, this product as PM and uh, released after half a year after the project have started. So to, to explain uh, about AI product management, uh, yeah, today uh, I'm going to use our uh, this product as a sample case. So yeah, mm, uh, considering the AI product management, uh, I think it might be the first question. So that is, so what is the difference in product management uh, between AI product and uh, non AI product? It mm, basically. Our main three perspectives, yeah, it is often described in product management. So these main three perspectives for product management are the same. So, but generally speaking, uh, PM has to have a much more role in technology. Of course, uh, to develop and to design the product, um, yeah, uh, we have conducted interviews to creators or potential customers and to define targets and according to the business strategy and market research design the UX. Yeah, it's completely the same as knowing product management, but core part uh, in this product is uh, conversation with AI characters and our content uh, that are created by AI characters. So uh, UX is depends on AI model quality. Uh, so, but this model quality depends on uh, not only data and algorithm. Yeah, of course, uh, it is often said uh, the data and algorithm is uh, very essential for an AI model, but it is not enough. So it means uh, you have to manage uh, also the computational resource and cost. So because it takes a much of cost to generate something, a content or a conversation. So it takes a lot of cost. So PM has to understand and manage those kind of air-related parts that will determine UX. Yeah, it's it's very interesting part, but it is a little bit complicated and not simple. So why uh, it is not uh, simple and complicated. Uh, let me explain about that in the next slide. So this is uh, interdependence. Uh, each part is interdependent. So it means improving one part could affect another part battery. Uh, for example, yeah, uh, the larger the model is, uh, better the quality is. So it's very natural. So it doesn't have any conflict. So, but for other factors, for example, if the larger the model will be, the more it needs computational resource and needs much most needs much cost. So if you can't accept much cost, you have to limit the capacity of the system. So it will cause some delay of response and it will read but UX. So as another part, for example, data, yeah, certainly you have to gather data as much as possible to raise the quality. But gathering data is also difficult part. And sometimes, uh, yeah, you have to gather by crawling web page with developers or by data uh, from other companies. But generally, raw data, raw data will not be good as training data for AI model. So your raw data is often contains 
uh, some meaning, meaningless data. So you, you have to clean the data to use our training data. So, but it takes how much time to increase, thing, uh, increase training data. So it could, it could delay the schedule. So like that, some factors are interdependent. So you have to understand those interdependence and balance each factors. Uh, but actually, if, uh, if you will use very small model, not large model, so you might need to care about computational, computational costs and resource severely. Uh, but in our product, uh, we have to consider uh, because yeah, we are using large model. And from the viewpoint of PM, large model is very variable and can implement a lot of acceptable use cases. But on the other hand, uh, it's a lot of points to be managed as a product. So as next topic, uh, let me explain about large model. So we are using large model, uh, so-called DBTX. Yeah, uh, possibly you might uh, hear about uh, this word. Uh, DBTX is originally being developed by OpenAI, and we are building uh, our own model. Yeah, uh, you might hear about the large model. Uh, sometimes it is called as LLM. And as long as I know, in Japan, uh, Rina is one of very few companies, only one, or uh, one of very few companies that use LLM uh, as actual product. So for this uh, large model, the process to build the model is uh, a little bit different uh, from small model. So there is two phases towards productization. Our first step is by research team. So that build pre-trained model with huge training data set. Our second phase is uh, applying to actual use case with some customization. Uh, for a customization phase, uh, there are various methodologies uh, like a fine tuning or official learning, something like that. And since this model is very large, so it takes so much time and cost to build the model and also uh, inference. Uh, inference means uh, generate something uh, with the model. And there are some limitations, uh, yeah, especially for traffic. Uh, traffic that can be handled with pre-repairable -repair, pre infrastructure. Uh, for example, uh, infrastructure that can handle with uh, 100 QPS uh, QPS means uh, query per second. And it is very easy to build the system uh, for a web page for uh, a 100 QPS. But yeah, in large model, it is very difficult to prepare. Yeah, actually, it is feasible, but it takes huge cost. So it's not realistic in terms of business. So, like that, uh, PM has to balance cost and UX. And uh, yeah, PM has to uh, understand the process and timeline for building the model and cost and resource. And also, yeah, this kind of uh, generative AI uh, has different and difficult points to use as product. So the large model uh, we are using is not only to recognize intention of user's query, for example, uh, this is a query that uh, user is uh, intended to say about whether or something like that. So mm, not like uh, this mm, classify, uh, classify and uh, uh, categorize the intention. Uh, th this is uh, not the large our large model. So it can generate uh, a good quality sentences and content uh, for any input. So it means in the product, our conversation or content generation is not rule-based, so completely generated by AI model. So uh, when using uh, this model, and when you draw wireframes to clarify UX, so there is nothing to describe, so other than yeah, in this part, generate something good conversation or uh, generate something good content. 
But uh, yeah, if you write uh, these kind of descriptions, yeah, you cannot build any good model, and it's not your job as uh, AI product management. So you have to manage to build good model. And but uh, it's almost impossible to pre predict the quality of new model and uh, new technologies, uh, methodologies uh, for customization uh, before uh, it's completed. So it is very predict the quality. So yeah, considering it, uh, next uh, question is how to manage the quality. Yeah, it is also difficult and interesting point. So in, in conclusion, uh, mm, you cannot commit the quality. So, but uh, quick iteration is very, very important. So it's impossible to control the quality. So only way to manage it is building process for quick iteration. So developing the product, uh, actually I did two things. Uh, first is divide the development process to app application development and model development. Uh, this is the yeah, left side. And regarding uh, app development, uh, I use established, already established and already confirmed uh, model to check UX other than conversation. So on the other hand, I asked the developer to develop very simple testing tool to test a uh, developing model independently. So by dividing the process, I conduct model test from very early stage in the project, uh, not waiting uh, for a completion of uh, UX development. And yeah, I could increase the iteration. And in addition to that, I build a process for an improvement iteration. So yeah, I like this chart. So this chart is very simple and are smart. Okay. Uh, smart, uh, but uh, smarter or not smarter, uh, you should start uh, this process, uh, data gathering, model training, uh, usage optimization and evaluation. So usage optimization is optimize customization of the model and optimize the usage of the model. And uh, yeah, uh, I recommend uh, you should start to build the process with the team uh, from the beginning of the product, uh, just to increase the frequency uh, to test the model. So yeah, this uh, quick iteration uh, is very important, but uh, building the process for a quick iteration is not enough. So there is some another difficulties uh, in this evaluation. So yeah, as an uh, additional point in, in the product, so how to evaluate the model is very important. So it has more difficulties in generative AI. So if the AI model is recognition, for example, to detect uh, something from the image and uh, translate some uh, translate some uh, speech to text. So the definition of the evaluation is more simple. Uh, accuracy, uh, precision, or recall is key metrics. Of course, uh, you have to set criteria uh, number, a uh, criteria number of key metrics, but the definition of metrics itself is very clear. So, but uh, for generative AI, uh, it's different. So the two screenshots uh, in the is a conversation on different two model. Uh, yeah, could you judge which model is better? Uh, it's somehow difficult to judge with intuition. So actually, uh, conversation uh, with model B is much better than A. So yeah, uh, as for a general, general conversation, um, it is very difficult to evaluate uh, because it, not, it doesn't have any specific goal like a task-oriented chatbot. So as for task-oriented chatbot, the goal is clear. 
for example, uh, complete the inquiry from customers and complete the booking of restaurant reservation like that. But uh, in our case, there is no goal in general conversation. Uh, it's the purpose of general conversation is, uh, yeah, if the user will enjoy for a long time, so maybe it's a good conversation like that. But uh, yeah, in our case, uh, you yeah, have to define uh, the evaluation axis and items. That is, we define uh, some questions and take questionnaire uh, with the questions. Uh, for example, uh, do you want to see following conversation or can you imagine the scene of conversation like that? So with this, these questions, I conducted some evaluation and which model we will adapt. So, but uh, yeah, um, there is some um, interesting point. Yeah, I think our definition can not always be applied to other cases. So the target of our product is our uh, younger generation. So if the target will be different, the definition should might be different. So means the evaluation result could be different according to the target. Uh, so to evaluate generative AI, uh, defining target is more important. So it's not only for UX, but also for developing the model. So and those definitions should be determined at the beginning of the mod, uh, product to build the circle of the model improvement. So, uh, so uh, with career evaluation items, so you can check the quality and uh, what improvement is good and what is not good. Yeah, um, I already introduced uh, some tips, but yeah, there are another, other, a lot of tips to manage the quality of your product. Uh, let's move on to next. Uh, thank you. Uh, there is some uh, questions. Uh, let me answer uh, after uh, my presentation. Okay. Uh, as next uh, tips of their product management uh, to, to deal with uncertainty. So there is always uncertainty of the quality of the AI model. So um, uh, these tips is uh, how to manage uh, the uncertainty. Uh, yeah, uh, let me use uh, this case of image generation. Uh, yeah, considering image generation, uh, you can consider two approaches. Uh, first is uh, offline, uh, online, online generation. So it's uh, uh, online generation, yeah, is uh, this one. And each general approach, uh, online generation is generating in real time. So in this approach, uh, you don't need to limit the variations of output uh, because uh, it will generate for every query and can return with different output for every query. So time to, but yeah, on the other hand, but uh, time to generate could be issue for a large model. And also you cannot check output quality in advance. So it has difficulties uh, to manage the uncertainty of the model, uh, model quality and output. So about us, uh, there is another approach uh, that is offline generation. Yeah, oh, sorry, uh, this one. And this offline generation is alternative approach and generating in advance and not to generate uh, for a user's query in real time. So the advantages of this pattern are, of course, response speed is not to be a matter because it returns generated content, so it can return immediately. And also you can check quality before deploying uh, generated images to server. So me means you can control the quality. But yeah, as a cons, uh, it leads to limit variations because it will not generate in real time. So if uh, yeah, this cons in offline generation, yeah, this part is acceptable, it can be an option. And in car, uh, I adapt 
uh, offline generation in some use cases. So this approach is often suitable for the case in which the model is very large and it takes a time and cost to generate. So yeah, it is our tips to manage the uncertainty. And also, yeah, uh, yeah, this tip is very, very super, super important. Uh, that is, uh, you should design the product with the understanding of AI, understanding of that AI model is never, never perfect and should design UX to manage uh, imperfect AI model. So it is very important. Yeah, again, uh, AI model uh, is never perfect. So you cannot, ex you cannot ex expect it. So in our product, the model will generate, of course, uh, inappropriate sentences in almost all cases, but sometimes generates inappropriate sentences uh, like a sexual content or political content. So, and an an as another problem, uh, AI should not reply concretely for some sensitive content. Uh, for example, uh, you will ask some political question uh, AI should not reply, neither agree or disagree. So AI should uh, reply with some uh, not agree, not disagree. Yeah. Um, I, um, for example, uh, um, AI character should not say, uh, I don't think so, why well, I agree with it like that. So even if it's very rare, have, rarely happen, only one time of inappropriate, inappropriate output will disappoint users drastically. And sometimes uh, it will be bad reputation. And yeah, uh, it will result in, mm, yeah, you have to close uh, the service as worst case. So, but it's very difficult to control uh, it in AI model. So implement some rule-based filtering system uh, that can reply with fixed message for inappropriate input and if inappropriate output will convert it to harmless ones. So yeah, this approach, uh, how to manage the imperfection is very important to provide good UX uh, with model. And of course, our researcher pursue the quality of the AI model, but, um, uh, it might not a proper expression, but you 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 should not believe uh, the report from the researchers. So yeah, you have to um, check the quality and how to manage the imperfection of the AI model. And also, yeah, uh, I have another topic that is uh, that is for post release improvement. So that is, a PM has to consider the circulation for continuous improvement. So that is like providing user values and getting data and improve the model and output much better with the data. So you should uh, design and implement uh, this circulation. And these UX together data uh, should be designed before uh, you release the product. So, and of course, uh, it is also essential to implement uh, terms of use uh, to get right consent from user. Uh, for example, uh, in CAR, uh, user can like, uh, yeah, this, this icon, with this icon, uh, user can like generated sentence and user can edit the sentences. So this uh, registered data will be used as input for the model. Uh, it's, of, it's of course uh, beneficial for our business because we can build good model and also it's valuable for users uh, because users can enjoy more sophisticated conversation with AI characters. So if you will not implement uh, those kind of circulation, you can improve uh, the AI model quality continuously. So how to gather data, how to provide better output, output from generated data, 
and implementing the circulation of the UX is yeah, very important. Yeah, those are the tips to good uh, build good AI model. Uh, those are implemented in the product Keral. And yeah, I used uh, Keral as a sample case today. Uh, but from my experiences of AI product in Linear or Line, I think good AI products are usually considered and implemented with those viewpoints. So yeah, as next topic, uh, let me talk about some recommendations to be a good AI product manager. Yeah, of course, I'm not sure I'm a good product manager. Uh, I cannot say I'm a good product manager, but uh, and uh, whether I'm putting it, uh, it into practice, but aside from that, uh, let me talk about some tips. Okay, for first is uh, reading the papers. Yeah, uh, I, strong, I strongly recommend uh, this. So implement uh, improvement and inventions of new methodologies is very, 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 very fast. So to understand the border, uh, what is possible or impossible, uh, reading the paper is very effective and efficient way. So this is a paper of GPT-3 uh, from OpenAI. So it was published about two, two years ago, probably, and but it's not new now. So there are a lot of uh, more sophisticated and improved uh, methods. But many recent approaches uh, transformer model is based on this GPT-3. So understanding this paper makes you easier to understand recent methodologies and the border of um, yeah, newest uh, approaches. And of course, yeah, I can't understand the details uh, in this paper because I'm not good at mathematics. So, but by reading it, I can understand the capability of the model to some extent and the difficulties uh, how can you use uh, the model. And uh, let me introduce another sample uh, that was published uh, by Google. So this is the chatbot uh, named Lambda from Google. And this paper demonstrates uh, how to do fine tuning with some training data. So I'm not going into, and I, I can't uh, go into the details, but the methodology is very interesting. So that, that is this part, uh, this a sentence, and this are some uh, label and score uh, is used as training data. So yeah, the score for each conversation will be used as training data and this approach is very simple, but it's very robust uh, method to generate good quality output. So because in gen generative model, it's very difficult to check the quality with some numeric bar and generate something. But with this approach, uh, you can get the score uh, in output and uh, can cut low qualified output and it makes the output quality stable. Yeah, uh, um, what I want to say is uh, the details of the paper, but yeah, considering how to implement circulation, as I said, uh, if you will uh, use uh, this approach, uh, you have to design UX according to these methodologies and implement our, uh, the circulation with this approach. So it means, so by reading the paper and understanding the state of the art uh, approaches, uh, you can design a proper UX uh, for continuous improvement. And also, uh, yeah, those are the examples to recommend reading paper. And this is maybe last one. Yeah, let me explain about um, actual my job as uh, AI product management. So that's a little bit different from previous tips, uh, but let me share about my management side. So while I said I introduced a lot of tips and recommendations, yeah, honestly, uh, it's yeah, impossible for me to understand all of the details 
uh, and manage uh, all of the things uh, with deep understanding in, in each area. So um, yeah, I try to I try to understand what is impossible. So um, I I understand I try to understand uh, the, what is the uh, professionals in each area and how to connect to the people uh, in each area and yeah, how to make the project smooth. And uh, of course, uh, yeah, you have to understand the border of the technologies, but uh, yeah, I think you cannot uh, understand the details. So yeah, um, as my management style, uh, I built uh, yeah, this kind of network structured uh, team uh, to be a self-organized uh, team. So by uh, building uh, this kind of team, uh, I'm managing a complicated uh, AI product. So yeah, I can talk about this management style uh, probably for a couple of hours, but yeah, I don't have much time today. So yeah, if you have uh, interest uh, about uh, this management style, uh, please refer uh, to the medium. So I sometimes uh, post a book. And uh, you, okay. and this is almost the, up to the end of my presentation. Uh, let me recap my point. Uh, first, about the difficulties and approach. Uh, first one is understanding interdependent variables for uh, AI model and besides the most optimal and realistic methodology. And second is, uh, yeah, you should understand the imperfection of the AI model and how to manage uh, with uh, imperfection. And third is uh, yeah, how to evaluate. Uh, you should define uh, how to evaluate the model at the beginning of the product uh, design. And also, uh, yeah, uh, for a continuous improvement, uh, you have to build circulation and uh, it should be implemented in UX. And about recommendations, yeah, reading paper, uh, so by understanding uh, the um, summary of the um, state of the art methodologies, uh, you can design a good UX and good or uh, circulation. And also uh, last, uh, as last uh, tips, yeah, understanding the professionals of all fields, uh, not only general development, but also uh, researchers. Uh, yes, research domain, Mm, it is very difficult to understand, but mm, it's not necessary to understand the details. But uh, yeah, uh, if you understand to some extent, it is very helpful to manage the product. And our last general tips, uh, management style. So I think it's more important than non-AI product uh, because AI product is generally more complicated. So it is um, almost impossible uh, to manage uh, by one person. Yeah, those are the tips uh, in my session. And so I think this is the uh, first page. Uh, let me share one thing. Uh, yeah, this is a kind of advertisement. Uh, we are always open to hire new people. So if you have interest about doing a business or a product, uh, please contact me or apply at hiring page. Yeah, thank you for listening. And this is the end of my presentation. And thank you for giving me a lot of questions. Let me check. Okay, first question. Uh, Hiroki san, maybe I can speak the question out for you. Do you think that will help? Ah, uh, yeah, I can see the questions. Okay. So first question is first question is which probably from Dennis san. Uh, interesting work. How uh, different is the role of an engineer in managing data model computational complexity different from AI PM, yes. Uh, generally speaking, uh, AI engineers doesn't have 
the perspective of business and user needs. So I think it is not different from a uh, non-AI product, but uh, AIP, AIPM has to understand the user needs and uh, business opportunities and the user market. Mm. But yeah, mm, I would say uh, there is one difficulty that is if user will want very perfect conversation is like a, it is just like a human conversations. If user desire uh, these kind of qualities, it is impossible to implement. So um, you have to um, match the um, feasibilities of AI technologies and uh, user market. If uh, there is a lot of uh, potential of the market, but if it is not feasible, you have to change the market and the target uh, that, uh, that can implement with current AI technologies. And, and also, uh, there is another interesting point that is the improvement and invention is very fast uh, in AI, uh, AI domains. So for example, this month, it is um, impossible to implement, but uh, three months later, uh, it could be possible. So it is very, it is very um, interesting point. So you have to predict. So what will be possible? What will still not possible uh, in future? So this kind of pre prediction is necessary for an AI product manager. So, um, so to, to predict uh, this kind of uh, the progress of AI technologies, yeah, I recommend uh, to read the sound papers. Okay. And next is how frequency do you develop uh, character models? Yeah, uh, there is uh, two types of model development. Uh, first is pre-trained model. I think pre-trained model is um, every few months, three months or, or a big change uh, every six months. Like that, uh, here is, uh, yeah, this one. So because yeah, this uh, building uh, pre-trained model, it takes a uh, time. Oh, this is, uh, this um, timeline is a little bit, little bit wrong. But, but this customization is very fast. Even when user will register some, uh, some data, it will be applied to the model immediately. Yes, so uh, there is a various type of uh, uh, methodology of how to apply the data to the model. So, but uh, with uh, most simple um, methodologies, uh, the user's data will be applied um, immediately. Yes. Okay, and are your conversational AI based to own Nihon or English or both. Yeah, currently, uh, we only support uh, Japanese. But yeah, uh, it is also an interesting point. Mm. Uh, probably mm, until one or two years ago, mm, it is very difficult to build multilingual model. So yeah, you have to build the model for each language. But um, mm, uh, there is a lot of uh, progress uh, in, in natural language processing domain. And so it is uh, getting be easier to build a um, um, multi model. So um, I think, I think our, it is not planned, but I think uh, we can uh, support uh, other language, yes, in future. And the next question is since a model, uh, since a model depends on heavily on data, how, how is a PM constrained? We are, et cetera, heavily on data. Oh, so sorry. Mm, I, I, 
couldn't understand the detail of this question. Oh, so, summer, summer, ha, ha, sorry, can, how can I? Can you hear me? Ah, yes. Ah, uh, yeah, I can probably just ask. Um, so your AI models would generally require a lot of like personal data, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So in what ways are you like, let's say, legally restrained or what kind of limitations do you have, do you face in making your decisions? Difficulties, yes, uh, it's a very, yeah, very good point. Mm. Okay, uh, let me use this chart. Yeah, to to build this pre pre to build this pre-trained model, uh, we we put a lot of effort for a very long time to clean the data, so delete some uh, mm. sensitive data or privacy data. So it is uh, there is no silver bullet methodologies. It is a very uh, yeah, something like boring uh, operations, but uh, to build a pre-trained model, uh, yeah, we have to uh, clean the data, and we have a data team and research team. Uh, the collaboration with data team and mm -hmm. research team, uh, we cleaned our this big data, and as for this customization, currently, uh, users data is not used for other users. So to, to build uh, this kind of customization, customization is something like a small model or a configuration uh, to generate something with this pre-trained model. And this uh, yeah, user's input data is used only for uh, these characters. So uh, there is uh, no issues about how to handle uh, the sensitive data uh, the, yeah, of course, if uh, we will use uh, some user's data to other user, so we have to check uh, very severely that doesn't contain any, any privacy data like that. But it is very difficult to, and to, it has a lot of risk. So uh, we regulate our uh, regulate the range uh, of the data data usage uh, by um, product design. Yes, and also yeah, legally, legally uh, we can use any data uh, uh, for any users. Uh, for any users means uh, we can use the data from uh, user A uh, we can use uh, this uh, data from user A to user B. So yeah, in, in terms of use uh, in your product, uh, it is allowed. But it is not only the um, issue, uh, it is not only the matter of uh, terms of use. So of course, user is very sensitive uh, to use the data. So yeah, also considering uh, how, to, how to feel the user, uh, how, how user will feel, yeah, we are limiting uh, the uh, data usage in this product. Okay, and our next question, how do you prioritize resources between model quality and UX? What are the baseline benchmarks that you want uh, your model to do? Uh, prioritize resources between model quality and UX. Yeah, actually, um, yeah, we I don't need to prioritize these two parts, uh, model quality and UX, because uh, the needed skills for to improve the model quality and build some UX is completely different. Uh, because uh, to implement UX, it is our uh, mm, it is the same as uh, no AI product. So software designer and UX designer like that. And but to improve the model quality, uh, it is uh, needs some statistical skills. 
uh, and also data processing. Yeah, it means uh, yeah, you have to clean the data, uh, how to gather, uh, how to gather data and clean the data. It needs a data processing. And also um, evaluation needs some statistical uh, background and skills. So which model is good and how to evaluate uh, the model and how much of uh, how much how much people is necessary to evaluate uh, in a, uh, appropriately like that. So the skills is different for both. So uh, yeah, I don't need to prioritize and uh, we, I don't need uh, the uh, how to divide the resource to these two parts. Okay. And uh, I like the fact that you are developing data-centric uh, models. Yes, mm. data-centric models. Yes, so it's very important. So data quality determine the quality uh, of the model. So yeah, how to gather the data and how to uh, how to how to update the model and how to deliver the model and how to check the uh, quality of the conversation after the model uh, has updated. So this kind of process is very important. And yeah, uh, I always try to automate uh, as long as possible uh, to shorten the cycle uh, of the continuous improvement. Yes. So I think it is very important part for PM. So of course, uh, it needs a, a lot of engineering effort to automate something. But uh, yeah, as we point of PM, uh, PM, I think you have to prioritize to build this circulation. So yeah, it is very important part in PM. And uh, what do you enjoy most about your work? Or oh, thank you for this question. <laughs> I like this question. And yeah, uh, Inna product has very interesting point. Mm, how can I say? Uh, a lot of users in Carl feel their, their characters not, not chatbot, but like a human. Mm, how can I say it? Mm, uh, so they don't think uh, our AI characters as a tool, but like a human. Uh, of course, uh, we have conducted a lot of user interviews. And uh, yeah, I, I always uh, hear about the feelings for the AI characters. And uh, they feel their characters like a friend or a families. And they are encouraged by AI characters. So it is not only a uh, convenient tool or um, automate something. So it can encourage people. So yeah, my fundamental motivation is how to improve the communication in humans. So I, I think uh, there is a lot of problems of the communication in humans. So, but I think, yeah, as I introduced at the beginning of presentations, AI yeah, characters can improve the human communication and connect people. So that is uh, my fundamental motivation of my product. Okay. Ah, uh, sorry, the time is already over. <laughs> no problem, uh, Hiroki mm -hmm. san. It, uh, I just wanted to say it's a really, really great presentation. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we all learned a lot of interesting things today and maybe today inspires someone to take up more of AIPM or maybe go read a paper. So thanks a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I think we have another AI um researcher maybe correct me if i'm wrong but dennis wanted to take two minutes to contribute to this conversation as well so please feel free to speak up dennis yeah thank you Tanmel. Uh, so my name is dennis and uh, hiroki this work is really interesting and i think 
uh, you know, you just made good scruples when you're explaining all this. And to add on this, um, you're speaking about the, the, the difference between the AI engineer and a PM role, bringing the fact of the business acumen. And one thing I would like to stress out here is, I think that's where most of AI models fail. Uh, the fact that, you know, as AI engineers, they just focus on, you know, their whole template and rushing to develop these highly accurate models and all that. Now, the fact that general normal PM just come in here, you know, they miss that meeting, the, that part where they're supposed to in, fully engage them right from the beginning in the business argument. So getting fully involved in the business, understanding, you know, the core values, for instance, are you focusing on the, uh, the customer, you know, the customer, you know, satisfaction, or are you focusing on the profit uh, satisfaction? So understanding that and fully including AI engineers it becomes smooth. Like for instance, the AI engineers taking the model up to probably 90%. And to you say, no, we need maybe 80, 80, I don't know if you can get up to an 89%. So, mm. you know, you know, you know that. So, but the fact that, you know, maybe getting up to 70, it's even very important. You know, you're mm. mentioning like recall, which is mm. really brings out that important thing. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to, to you know, to, to to highlight on that. And uh, and and again to encourage, you know, the fact that you you're mentioning how you understand the research, which is very important, understanding mm. these papers and what's behind it. Why should you rush into a GPT two or GPT three and yet there are other cases like you know the biases which go on and the way you know I, I like the fact that you've included where you have to filter like the bias you know between the, the like politics and that yeah so that is what i wanted to highlight and then thank you again for for your contribution thank you yeah, yeah thank you all right thank you so much dennis